We started this show for a, a lot of different reasons, but the spark that ignited it all was my need for a rooftop from which to sound my barbaric yawp when, for example, the Supreme Court made a short-sighted, narrow-minded, beetle-headed, underhanded, flat-footed, shit-brained, backward-ass, goddamn, cocktarted, misguided, untenable, ill-advised, half-cocked, fucked-up, dick-blister of a decision like the one that they announced on Monday. Now, I should be clear because it's not like the SCOTUS limited themselves to a single egregious fuck up on Monday. So for the record, I'm talking about the unprecedentedly asinine decision they handed down in Trinity Lutheran versus Comer. You might recall that we had friend of the show, Andrew Torres, of the Opening Arguments podcast on the show back on episode 220 to discuss this case. But in the interest of a quick refresher, here's the argument. State of Missouri starts a program to resurface playgrounds with that mulched up tire stuff instead of the jagged quarry detritus that awaited me at the bottom of the monkey bars. Now, funds are limited, so they take applications from nonprofits of all kind that have gravelly playground surfaces that need to be resurfaced. And among the applicants is one Trinity Lutheran Learning Center. State of Missouri sees this application, points out that the state constitution actually expressly for forbids them from giving money directly to a religious institution, so they reject the application on this basis, and the church sues them, claiming their religious liberty has been violated. Their religious liberty to have state-funded playground surfaces. And some fucking how, this makes it all the way up to the Supreme Court, despite all the courts along the way coming down on the you've got to be fucking kidding me end of the spectrum. Now, when we talked about this after oral arguments, Andrew seemed pretty confident that reason was going to win out over theocracy here. I mean, keep in mind that this is not a case about whether or not the church can give money to a Christian learning center. It's about whether the state has to, whether or not a church can compel the state to give them taxpayer funds against their will. And in Andrew's defense, any rational reading of this law would have backed him up on this. Of fucking course the state has the right to say, hey, of these limited funds that we have to resurface playgrounds, we're more interested in using them to resurface the playgrounds of places that don't strictly exist to promote religious ideology. Well, at least of fucking course they had that right from December 7th, 1787 all the way up to last fucking Sunday because apparently now they don't. Surely you're wrong, you must say. Surely a goddamn 7-2 decision in favor of this opinion couldn't completely fucking gut church state separation and force secular institutions to compete with religious ones for limited funds that have been earmarked for a secular purpose. Why, what you describe would be a brazen evisceration of the establishment clause and would take a legal justification so contorted it could tie the camera in a knot mid-colonoscopy. And yes, it would. And yes, it does. But no, I'm fucking not. I was so hoping I had this wrong, but I don't. This is a scalpel along the Achilles heel of every judicial precedent that protects your tax dollars from the greedy, misguided hands of Christ's army. It was not hyperbolic when Sonia Sotomayor summarized her dissent to this opinion by saying that it made separation of church and state a slogan rather than a commitment. So here's the majority opinion on this fucking nonsense, with the caveat that A, I don't speak legalese, and B, it doesn't make any fucking sense even if you do. What the court is saying here is that as soon as Missouri offered up this program to nonprofits, it became a public service, and everyone in the state should be eligible for these public services. Now, they admit you can set certain restrictions on these public services, i.e., you have to have a playground, but those restrictions can't simply be whether or not the institution availing itself of those funds is religious. But in order for that to make sense, you have to act like the words secular and religious are just convenient convenient categorical markers rather than descriptions of real fucking things. I mean, the purpose of a religious and a secular institution are fundamentally different. By definition, a secular learning center serves the purpose of learning. That is not the case with Trinity Lutheran. Their primary purpose is to make Christians. Their primary purpose is to use the learning center to cultivate Christianity and children and turn them into disciples of Christ. And you don't have to take my fucking word for that, by the way. Just read their goddamn mission statement or any other six consecutive words on their website. They make no effort to pretend like their primary purpose to, is, is education or community service. They're there to breed the next generation of suckers that pay their fucking bills. And the fact that the facility is also used for learning is no more relevant than the fact that the pews are also used for child rape. But to hear Chief Justice Roberts tell it, if you say teaching kids about real shit is more valuable to the state than teaching them how to tithe to churches, that's discrimination. That's a violation of their religious freedom, no less. Not getting my goddamn tax dollars is a violation of their religious freedom. Over and over again in this decision, Robert says that the church has to choose between being a church and getting these public funds. But what the fuck does that even mean?
Well, I mean, you could cease to exist and just be a free-floating playground with no associated buildings, or you could be a church and get double-dipped tax exemptions and not have to hire gay people and not have to report where any of your fucking money goes and not have to pay property taxes and not have to offer birth control to your employees or follow any of the other fucking laws you don't like. He laments that the church is being excluded from this program, quote, strictly because of what it is, a church, end quote, as though that's some de facto charge of discrimination. But all exclusions exclude shit for what they are. That's what that word means. The state of Pennsylvania refused to use funds set aside to refurbish historical landmarks to my project simply because of what it is. A capacious ball pit in my backyard. Save me from this discrimination, Chief Justice Roberts. Look, there's no fucking way to square this goddamn ruling with the Establishment Clause. If the government can be forced to hand churches money to make capital improvements on their buildings, there's no goddamn way to argue the government isn't endorsing a religion, and, and it's endorsing one religion. I mean, I'm sure that the supporters here would argue that funds like these will now be available to any religion in Missouri that has a dedicated learning center large enough to require a $20,000 playground resurfacing. Muslim, Santeria, Hindu, atheist, anybody. But something tells me that even if somehow a Muslim center qualified, some Missouri bureaucrat's going to move their application to the bottom of the list for some unrelated reason. Because if they didn't, suddenly all the Christians celebrating this decision would have to come face to face with what audacious anti-constitutional horse shit it really is. And if that's not enough to scare you, by the way, I should point out what Gorsuch had to say on this. Uh, he agreed with the majority opinion, but he had one tiny dissent, the one little footnote that sought to put a fig leaf of limitation on this ruling. And what Gorsuch said was basically, look, I realize that this decision leaves the Establishment Clause bleeding out on the side of the road, and that's great and all. I mean, that's what we're going for. But I'd love to stop all that twitching before we drove off altogether. You know, not to put too much pressure on here, but the wall was already crumbling under our feet, folks. And this decision was about a 7.2 on the Richter scale of First Amendment jurisprudence. We've got at least one Supreme Court justice just dying to knock it down altogether and liberal justices that can't be bothered to give a fuck. We've held the line for hundreds of years against this shit, but we've always had that wall to help us out. But don't forget, even when the wall goes down, we still have to hold the line.